Well, our next guest has dedicated her life to giving animals a second shot. Pam Ahern founded Edgar's Mission in 2003 and now cares for over 450 rescued animals. And to talk to us about it is Pam herself. Pam, welcome to the Ben Robin Robbo Show. Hi, everyone. (laughs) Now, for those of us who don't know, can you tell us a bit about what Edgar's Mission is? Edgar's Mission is a not-for-profit sanctuary for rescued farm animals. We're in the beautiful Massive Ranges here in Lance Hill, Victoria. And and how did this organisation start and grown into what it is now? It started in 2003 with a girl, a pig and a dream. I rescued a pig, I named him Edgar Allen. I had no idea that the organisation was going to grow as big as it has, or, or literally Edgar was going to grow as big as he did. It was really a quirky idea for a photo shoot, and the photo shoot went so well, we were going to do an action on the steps of Parliament House, and I took Edgar down to my local park to teach him to walk on a lead and get him used to the public. And people just came from everywhere to marvel at my pig and his unique brand of pig. It came from watching people's interactions with Edgar that got me thinking <laughs> to change the way people think about the animals, the animals themselves. While I could speak to people's it could just weigh into their hearts. Well, we've seen some really beautiful pictures here of the, uh, some of the animals that you have. Uh, Pam, where, where do most of your animals come from? That's a really good question. When I started the, the sanctuary, I thought, gosh, you know, where, where am I um, going to find the animals to fill up the sanctuary? And a friend said to me, why don't you start? Why don't you put the shingle up that your rescue farmed animals, they would come from everywhere. And they literally have. And it's really because there are no places for farmed animals to go when they become, oh, lost, abandoned, <laughs> neglected um, or abused. Technical malfunction. I'm much better at looking after animals than I am with technology. <laughs> um, so look, a lot of our animals, uh, they'll, they'll come from, from pounds. Um, farmers will even surrender them and the goodness of the human heart people see these animals particularly at this time of year we have lots of little orphan lambs who come to us who remember that the public have literally found them on the side of the road they've been taken from from paddocks and by predators and and dropped and that's really quite sad it also speaks to the goodness of the human heart that when we see animals in trouble we we want to help them and Pam I can see that you're wearing a mask yourself is that a concern um, around the animals at the moment no, it's not such a concern around the animals. It's part of our compliance with the legislation around Victoria that when we're outdoors, we are we are wearing masks. Uh, the animals are quite safe here. We just want to make sure that the people stay safe and that we are doing... Uh, interesting, though, we wonder what the animals must think with everyone running around in masks at the, the moment. <laughs> <laughs> but actually, you know, it, it speaks to how animals uh, are in tune to humans and they take so many more cues, not just from our facial expressions, although they can read our facial expressions, but our body language speaks volumes to these animals. And really, you know, a lot of the animals that we have here, most of our animals are prey. What? Animals? <laughs> Hi, Red Baron. <laughs> uh, the animals that we have at the sanctuary are prey animals. So they read human behaviour long before they can see their face. What would be happening to these animals if they weren't at the sanctuary? Sadly, if these animals weren't at the sanctuary, their futures would would be pretty grim because there really are not places for farmed animals to go when they're no longer wanted or or they're neglected or abandoned. Uh, We have lots of places that rescue cats and dogs. Ruby! (laughs) We have lots of places that rescue cats and dogs and there are lots of places for our wildlife. You know, it really speaks to how farm animals have become forgotten. Now, look, I was shocked to hear that animal, that farm animals are excluded from animal t- cruelty laws that protect domestic animals like cats and dogs. Why do you think there's a disconnect between humans and the animals you find yourself looking after? That, that's a really good question. I remember I, I grew up as the animal-loving child that I was, and I took great comfort that our society cared deeply about animals. You know, we're enshrined in our legislation. It's called the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals Act. But I was deeply disturbed to learn that farmed animals have become specifically exempted from that piece of legend by way of acts of cruelty, which means I can do things to the rescued farmed animals here that if I did to the cats and dogs, I would be charged with cruelty. And it's really a disconnect that's been made by human convenience. So we can do these things that if um, allows us to do these things to these animals, it has nothing to do with the animal's intelligence, has nothing to do with the emotional world of the animals, or even indeed the animal's ability to suffer. It's purely designed to allow humans to do the things that we've done. And the public really aren't aware of this. And it's something that Edgar's mission really wants to get across to the public to think about the choices that we make and how they impact upon not only animals, but but people and the planet as well. 
Yeah, it's a very important um, message that you're trying to get out there, Pam, and we're so grateful that you've been able to share it with us today. You do have one of your animal stars there at the moment who's been trying to get some of the limelight from you. Who have you got there? This is Vet Nurse Ruby. Originally she was just Ruby, but over the years she's, uh, she's found her true calling and that is to be a vet nurse. Ruby is a purebred working Kelpie. She was uh, about a year yes. old when she came to us and she was purchased uh, by a farmer for a lot of money um, to work yeah. the sheep. But uh, Ruby was, wasn't really interested in working the sheep and uh, she, would, she wouldn't do her task. The farm became quite uh, cross with Aww. Ruby and he beat her and abused her trying to get her to do what she wanted it just sort of downward spiral for poor old Ruby and he got so frustrated he gave it to his mate to, to shoot and the chap went to shoot Ruby and, and Ruby looked into his heart and looked into his soul and, and the guy just didn't have the heart to do it so he, he brought her around to us and said you know can you take this dog on and we thought well we'll, we'll get her back to good health and we'll, we'll find a home for her uh, but in the meantime Ruby found her calling and, and that is um, to be an ambassador for kindness here at Edgar's Mission and she, she works and shares the kindness of all the residents that come in any new animal she's there with them sitting through the them without the night helping me feed orphan lambs She's oh, great. she is beautiful <laughs> oh, absolutely beautiful look if you'd like to know more about edgar's mission and show your support you can go to edgarsmission.org.au pam we appreciate your time to go today and hopefully a lot of people will get behind you and support the great work that you're doing thank you so much it's the Ben, Rob and Rob, Ben, Rob and Rob, Ben, Rob and Rob.